we're going to jump into part two of Chris Paul and specific trade rumors and trade proposals that could go down. Um, in part one, we did cover the New York Knicks and the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, now we're going to jump into part two here and give our take. Destination, the L.A. Clippers. Mm. We don't need to imagine what that would look like <laughs> since he played there for six seasons. We could just use one of the old pictures. Um, Tim Bontemps with this potential trade need to get creative, get a third team to make it work. So here is the fake. Um, originally with the LA Clippers, they could go that route. I don't think it's really needed as much. I think if you are going to get a floor general and a true point guard, um, you know, I would say championship experience, but Chris Paul doesn't even have a finals appearance. You could go along the sides of a Rajon Rondo. Again, you can pretty much pick him up for around eight to eleven million dollars in free agency. Um, if you want to go for Chris Paul, again, he's going to be forty million dollars. You're going to have to let go of all of your bench. You're not going to be able to re-sign Montrezl Harrell, um, kind of these other players as well. And I, I don't believe you have the bird rights on Montrezl Harrell. I would have to look back on that. Um, but some of these players, ever since they got bounced in the second round, I think they're done with L.A. You know, Paul, and there was a little rumor and report that came out, but after they lost Game 7, Paul George was in the locker room stating how everyone needs to come back together for a second stint, and people were rolling their eyes, and they didn't want to hear it. So with chemistry going down, Doc Rivers fired. I, I think some of these players would not return um, to the Clippers. And that could make you that could make you the LA Clippers to be forced to, you know, clean the bench and pretty much bring in Chris Paul on your franchise. I'm not saying that's gonna happen. I don't know what the environment is with the players. Um, and if there's any toxicity keep going around and players are expecting to leave, if they are to do so, you bring in Chris Paul. If not, you try to go for Rondo, you gotta retool and give a second stint. But that's on that. Um, but if Chris Paul were to be on the team, if they're to retool, I mean, ideally, I think it would be a great fit for Kawhi Leonard. He did benefit playing with Kyle Lowry as the second option. Chris Paul is somewhat similar in that aspect. Um, you know, they're both very outspoken. They're both floor generals. Um, they both demand, you know, to get deep in the playoffs and try to win a championship at least. Um, and they both can show up in the fourth quarter and, you know, they can be a great second option for any championship contender. I think that would fit very well with Kawhi Leonard. And let alone with Paul George, he can just pretty much, even if he is a play, playoff P, it's not a big deal. Um, there's going to be a lot less pressure on him. Um, you know, that's the reason you could go to the Clippers. I know Chris Paul ideally wants to go to L.A. So if he goes back on the team, there's not going to be Doc Rivers. You're going to have Tyron Lue out there. And I think Chris Paul will love the challenge of going back to L.A., to try to redeem himself with the Clippers. Um, but with the trade over here, let's see, Chris Paul, the Thunder received Nicholas Batum, <laughs> Rodney McCruger. <laughs> Yo, these trades are terrible. If you guys were on part on part one, <laughs> they had Chris Paul for Dennis Smith Jr. straight up. Uh, no, no, no. If you're, if you're trading him to the Clippers, you can definitely bring in, well, you're not going to get first-round picks because they all traded it away to the uh, – um, you know, for the, for the Paul George trade. So ideally, if you're the Oklahoma City Thunder, you're not going to deal with the Clippers because they're not going to have those first round picks. And they don't they don't have true young cats on their team. The only one is uh, Zubak and, you know, Land, Landry Shamit. But besides that, you can get a lot more other teams with picks and teams. So that's not going to happen. Chris Paul to the Clippers. Um, and then the Hornets would get Montrezl, Cyril, Lou Will. Patrick Beverly. Yeah, man, if you're the Hornets, you definitely, just to give up Nicholas Batum for that, I mean, that's a great pick for the Hornets. Um, but with Montrezl Harrell, it, yeah, it would have to be a sign and trade because he's a free agent. Um, no, this trade is not going to happen. Logistically, it makes sense. No, it's, it won't. Three team deal. The Clippers would get Chris Paul, the Thunder would get Nicholas Batum and Rodney Magruder from the Hornets. The Hornets get Montrez Harrell via a sign and trade, Lou Williams and Patrick Beverly. I mean, what do you think about CP3 going back to LA into that Clippers locker room? Okay, so uh, the mock trade aside, which draws a very ill reaction for me from what <laughs> Oklahoma City is getting. Obviously, this is a perfect fit for the Clippers. Everything that we talked about that they're lacking in terms of 
a veteran voice, someone who's going to tell people to get their heads out of their you know where, someone who's going to help that offense that was so stagnant in the playoffs last year, get more ball movement, more passing, more scoring opportunities for everybody, and then uh, obviously the defense and the familiarity that he has with the organization, with the city. Chris Paul is the greatest Clipper of all time. If, if you look at it, if you if you take how long he was here, what he accomplished here. So it would be only honestly as well. If you really think about it, you could really trade away Paul George. And if you just bring in Chris Paul with Kawhi Leonard, it's very similar to uh, the Raptors when you had Kawhi and Kyle Lowry. Now, you did have Pascal Siakam as a third option, a young guy out there. But pretty much if you trade away Paul George and you have a third team trade, I'm trying to think if the Thunder have a young guy that can kind of resemble Something like that. Um, the Thunder are not going to give away Shy Goss Alexander. And I don't know. I'll have to think a little more about that. Maybe they would have to do a four-team trade. And if you're the Clippers, if you give away Paul George for Chris Paul, you can probably find and get another, you know, somewhat, somewhat of a third option. I can't really put my nail on it. Um, but I don't know. We'll, we'll continue. We'll continue fitting for him to return to the Clippers and help them get across the hump. Yeah, I think this is the best possible fit. If you put Chris Paul in the Clippers with Kawhi and Paul George, you're looking at the next super team, I believe. I mean, Chris Paul played at a, a great all-star level in some people's eyes, MVP level. And mm -hmm. you know what Kawhi and Paul George bring to the table? Absolute best possible fit for him. Uh, they need his leadership, and this team would be the favorite if they had Chris Paul. Hmm. The only thing I, if I can be the, 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 the negative guy here, all right, is the only thing I see wrong with the fit mm -hmm. is all of those guys need the ball in their hands. Right. Every one of them are playoff the dribble type players. Uh, n no, not exactly. Kawhi Leonard, when he was on the Toronto Raptors and even in the finals, beginning of the game, he didn't even touch the ball until like three, four minutes into the game. Kawhi Leonard can play off the ball. He's not ball dominant. He doesn't need the ball in his hands all the time. He can play in a team system. Somewhat with Paul George as well. Um, so that's not a big deal. They needed a floor general to bring up the ball and initiate the offense. So if you're Kawhi and Paul George, you don't want to bring up the ball whenever they're inbounding it, typically. You'll do it around 5 to 10% of the time. It's not a big deal. But the other 90%, you want, Paul, you want uh, Chris Paul to do that. Now when it comes to the half-court set, and Chris Paul will love to do this. He'll love to give the ball to Paul George and Kawhi Leonard to do their thing, let alone get him for assist. So, actually, I think this is actually a more ideal fit, Mr. Fizdale. And when one has it, two other guys are standing. Like, when we were in Miami, we had Dwayne and LeBron who needed the ball in their hands. Right. Chris Bosh was a little different, whereas these three guys are all that way. If T. Lou can get it to work, if this was to happen, mm -hmm. it would be exactly what... Listen, <laughs> it's not difficult whatsoever. Chris Paul can play off the ball. Chris Paul is going to bring up the ball majority to pretty much 95% of the time. Chris Paul can give you 10 points a game and 13 assists. He's cool with it. I mean, if you have Paul George and Kawhi Leonard out there, he's going to make them better. He's going to feed them. He's going to get them moving off the ball. Ideally, this is a better fit for Paul George and Kawhi because the first season, it was more forced. I mean, if you're Patrick Beverly, you're not a playmaker. You're not going to be able to feed him the right direction, especially on the fast break as well. Kawhi Paul George will not be forced or stressed to take shots. It's going to be a free flow. It's going to fit. He said a super team, which means all of those guys would have to sacrifice a little bit. But it could also be something where guys are pissed off at each other and it could get ugly. So it could go either way. I just... Bro, and this is why David Fisdale was fired. He's a terrible head coach. Listen, if you're Chris Paul... In the half-court set, you're not going to be de demanding the ball <laughs> to take shots, let alone hooking people up. If you bring up the ball and you have a half-court set initiating the offense, you're good enough. Whenever you bring up the ball from you know, inbound to the half-court, that's already around 8 to 12 seconds right there. Chris Paul does not need the ball in his hands after that, ideally. I think adding a super talent like Chris Paul, even though he's older, he showed you that he's still got a lot in the tank and he would add a lot to that locker room as a leader. Now, obviously, there were some locker room issues last time Chris Paul was in L.A. Paul, you would know. You had, you had the inside inside on that <laughs> more than any of us. But, you know, a lot of the guys would be gone. I mean, this trade would actually move some it's of the guys and, yeah. and the locker room issues of this. Yeah, Lou will pretty much. Actually, 
you probably could keep Lou Will since he's very underpaid. I'm surprised why. His agent, he needs a new agent. It's, it's blasphemous. Lou Will's only getting paid like 7 mil a year. So you could probably still keep him under the cap space. I'm not sure on that one. Um, but Montres Herald, he would have to go away. Um, Marcus Morris is going to be walking. Reggie Jackson is going to be walking. Joakim Noah is probably going to retire. Um, Landry Sherman is going to be gone. You know, you're going to have to retool your whole bench, which is not a bad thing. It's not, it's not a bad thing at all whatsoever. Um, I don't know if the Clippers are at that tipping point. It seems like that could be the case based on reports. But Chris Paul would, not be, would definitely be an ideal fit for the team um, if they're trying to make a championship push. I don't know if the Clippers with Paul George acquire it there yet to make a trade like that. I think the Clippers are fine enough where they are to rent them back. Uh, pretty much kind of retooling a little bit with those two and a true point guard, but I don't know. It may come to it. Last season, which Chris Paul had nothing to do with, are also something that Ty Lue is going to have to figure out there. So there's a whole lot going on there. I want to go move on to the 76ers, who we know will be open to dealing with Daryl Morey and Elton Brand at the helm. Uh, Tim provided this potential trade. Another and like I said in the part one of the video, the 76ers would be ideal. Um, and this, this is really comes down to Ben Simmons. I've always stated Ben Simmons needs to move from the point guard position to a three or a four. I don't like Ben Simmons as a one. It's very underrated, very stagnant on the half-court set. I feel like he's a wide receiver or running back trying to be and forcing himself to be a QB. No, don't do that. Um, Ben Simmons needs to be a three or four. He needs to work on his shot. He needs to take around two three-pointers a game. I don't care if they go in or not. He needs to take mid-range jumpers. He needs to get to the basket. If you're Doc Rivers, you need to tell Ben Simmons, you need to average 26 a game for our team. He needs to, he needs to get off the ball more. He needs to have Chris Paul or another point guard initiate the offense. And he needs to be on his young LeBron James flow. He needs to start scoring the basketball. You're 6'10", who's, you have a body frame as a small forward. You need to get to the basket. You need to be a scorer out there. The jump shot will go in. His jump shot does not look bad at all whatsoever. He's left-handed. Most left-handers actually look very smooth and, you know, flows kind of in. Um, if you're Chris Paul, that's an ideal fit for the Sixers. They are lacking true leadership and a number one guy on the team to pretty much be a leader. I'm not saying Chris Paul, talent-wise, would be the number one guy. When it comes to the face of a franchise of a true leader, Chris Paul would be that guy for that team. Um, and pretty much it gives you around a two-year experiment with Chris Paul, Joel Embiid, and Ben Simmons. If that doesn't work out, you can finally blow up Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons together. Um, besides from that, the cap space won't really be there for any other players after that. So you can bring in some 3 and D players. You can bring in Jonathan Simmons. You can probably get Wesley Matthews. Um, you know, for a minimum, possibly. Um, I'm trying to think of other, you know, 3D players in free agency market out there. Uh, you know, there's going to be some other players like that. Maybe Tyson Chandler to come as a center backup. Um, point guard position, you would have Chris Paul out there. You would have Raul Neto as a backup. Um, you can find some 3D players to take a pay cut, if anything. Uh, ideally, that would be a good fit. But let's look at this proposed trade. So Chris Paul goes to Philadelphia. Um, the Thunder will acquire Buddy Heald, Mike Scott, and Zyre Smith. Um, the Kings would acquire Al Horford and OKC's 2020 first-round pick via Philadelphia. Um, if you're the Kings, you're not going to give away Buddy Heald's big contract for Al Horford. That makes zero sense. Um, if you're the Thunder, Buddy Heald is going to be 27-28. His timeline doesn't fit with the Thunder. So I wouldn't make that trade. Uh, the only winner out here is the Philadelphia 76ers. Pretty much just giving away my Scott, Zier Smith, and Al Horford. Um, and for Chris Paul, that's, that would be a steal if you're Philly. A three-team deal to make it work here. Sixers get Chris Paul reuniting with Doc Rivers in Philly. The Thunder get Buddy Heald, Zaire Smith, Mike Scott. The Kings get Al Horford and OKC's 2020 first-round pick via Philadelphia. They got so many picks in the Thunder. I don't even know how you could keep track <laughs> whose pick is for And I think if Philly doesn't get uh, Chris Paul, I think they should really target Buddy Heald. He fits the timeline of being 27 years of age, who has experience, who can be a shooter out there. And a third guy. Now, pretty much you would 
have to keep Ben Simmons at the point guard. You can still put him at the three. Um, you can kind of work your way around that. But if you're Chris Paul, you definitely need to have Ben Simmons at the three or four. But Buddy Hield would actually be an ideal fit if they don't get CP3, if you're Philly. I mean, what do you think about the fit with the Sixers? I think uh, of the playoff teams, this is probably one of the worst fits. <laughs> I think that uh, Doc Rivers has his work cut out in terms of trying to figure out how to make. No, sir. Um, especially during the playoffs, this would be more of a traditional type team. Chris Paul is the most traditional point guard out there. Joel B is the most traditional center out there, but who can space the floor. And Ben Simmons will be the most traditional small forward out there. Um, this team would be a threat in the playoffs. Embiid and Simmons co-occupy the, the floor. Obviously, Simmons, when the ball's not in his hands, it's uh, a little bit like what, what Coach said with the Clippers. He's a guy who needs the ball in his hands. The difference is, at least in the Clippers, Kawhi and Paul George, they can space. Ben Simmons, up at this point of his career, hasn't... Ben Simmons will benefit playing off the ball. His overall and his production level numbers will go up skyrocketed as a superstar. If he would actually acknowledge himself to be a small forward or point forward, play off the ball for around, you know, 20 to 35% of the time, and if he becomes more of a scoring option and a scorer, Ben Simmons would be a superstar. He would be a top eight player in the league. I'm not going to say top five because there's too many superstars, but he'd be top eight. Um, but overall, he'd be, he'd be a superstar. He needs to, he needs to play off the ball showing an ability to either space or be productive off ball. Right. So I think that bringing Chris Paul in there is kind of a dangerous situation. The other thing I worry about is Chris Paul is a direct communicator. And I don't know if those guys are okay with having that kind of direct communication levied their way. And then finally, I got a question. Chris Paul and Doc Rivers, that relationship didn't exactly end mm -hmm. on uh, roses and, and kind of sweet smelling uh, tunes or whatever. So could they reconcile? Is that going to be an issue? So I, I'm not as high on this fit. Me neither. I don't want to see. Listen, if Chris Paul went to the Philadelphia 76ers, it can work out. But again, it's only going to be a two year experiment, if anything. Um, that's if you're Philly, and if you're really desperate enough and you're really in that position to where you really want to push for a finals appearance or go all out, you get Chris Paul. But I think with the timeline of things, Buddy Heald would be a better fit on their timeline, and you would still have Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons still be together, develop themselves, and figure things out. But Chris Paul, if he still if he went to Philadelphia, that's still a great fit. I don't care what the guys say. But basically, it comes down to Ben Simmons. He would need to run the three or four, play off ball, need to become more of a scoring option. Um, if he doesn't do that, then it's not going to mesh. Doc and Chris Paul reconciling. They tried it. The marriage lasted so long it didn't work. <laughs> Divorce. Everybody went their separate ways. There's no need to look back. Yeah, I don't think this is a good fit. And if you're Chris Paul, I think one of the downfalls, I'm, I mean, listen, the Doc Rivers thing is kind of here or there. It's whatever. Um, but if you're Chris Paul, kind of a click type of thing, you know, do you really want to be hanging around Joel and being Ben Simmons and mentor young guys like that? I think Chris Paul is at a point of his career to where he would like to join, you know, a veteran type team like the Clippers or Lakers. And, you know, if he has to do with the Bucks, he's cool with it because Giannis is a um, he's a top five player in the league and a superstar. So, I mean, he can handle that. But Ben Simmons and Joel B are kind of a little too young, you know, kind of as puppies. But I don't know. It kind of depends on CP3 where he's at. Uh, and, and, and like, think about it. You think Chris Paul wants to be in the middle of these two young guys feuding and having to always try to keep pulling them back in right now? And, and it's the same. He said it. He took the words right out of my mouth. It's worse than the Clippers from the standpoint of you got two other guys who really need the ball in their right. hands, but they do not provide spacing for each other. And so I agree totally uh, uh, with Amin, and I don't think this is a good fit. I agree with that. I will say that having been in the bubble, Chris Paul and Doc Rivers not only had to, but worked together on purpose in the bubble quite a yeah. bit, especially after the Milwaukee Bucks situation with their walkout. So I think that situation actually and being in the bubble together actually mended some of the fences if they were a little bit torn and broken um, from the Clippers experience. That being said, I don't know if they need to go right back to working against <laughs> with each other. I mean, I'm I friends mean with my ex-wife, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, pause. Okay. Um, we're going we're gonna to end it off on here. Um, for the Clippers, <laughs> that's kind of all over the place. 
Um, if you're Chris Paul, you want to be on the Clippers. You want to go back to L.A. I think he'd be cool with that. Um, ideally for Fitz, if you're the Clippers, it really comes down to, and the root is basically, if you know the bench and these role players are going to leave, they don't want to come back, and it's too much toxic environment, then, yeah, go ahead and make that trade for Chris Paul for a two-year experiment to try to win a championship. Uh, for the Philadelphia 76ers, I think these guys were too kind of hard on saying it's not the best fit. You can make it work, especially if you're Simmons and Embiid. They've always pretty much, you know, when Jimmy Butler came in, they really fed off being a second or third option, and Jimmy was that number one guy. And they went to game seven of the, the semis. So that's the furthest they've been. If they want to stay together, Embiid and Simmons as the one-two guys, you can still make, you know, potential conference finals appearance, but you're going to need a scoring option out there, and you're going to need a true leader. I think Chris Paul, if he goes to Philly, um, I don't think that'll be the first pick for Chris Paul, but at the end of the day, you're getting paid 40 mil. Um, you're not going to have a lot of stress, and you're not going to have a lot of responsibility for yourself. Um, and it's a great opportunity for those young guys as well. So if you're Chris Paul, if you go to Philly, I actually think that will be more of a traditional type team. I think this is the best thing for Ben Simmons to play off the ball, be more of a scoring option. But at the end of the day, for this to go through, depends on Doc Rivers, and it depends on Ben Simmons. Uh, but overall, kind of looking at part one and part two, I think the best fit for him ideally, and I'm surprised I didn't even mention it, would be the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, that's if the L.A. Lakers, if they're deciding to let go of a bunch of the younger guys, um, and they pretty much want to retool. But out of these four options right here, I think the best fit for both parties and the best seamless fit would be the Milwaukee Bucks uh, with that. Second would have to be most likely for the... Uh, try, I'm trying to think the, the other team they have there. Uh, oh, yeah. So I think it would be the Bucks number one, for best seamless fit for all parties. Number two would be the 76ers. Three would actually have to be for the LA Clippers. Four would be the New York Knicks, of course, which made no sense. Um, you can make a debate for the Clippers or Sixers. There's a lot of moving parts of what ifs. I think the Bucks is just the best. Both parties, you know, after, for example, whenever the, the Bucks lost to the Heat in the, in the playoffs, you know, right when the buzzer rang, they lost 4-1. Everyone was thinking, okay, they need to bring in Chris Paul. It was just, you know, a perfect match for both parties. So I think if you're Chris Paul to Milwaukee, that's probably most likely the move that's going to happen. And Milwaukee's very desperate. You're not going to bring in Bradley Beal. Um, Victor Oladipo's not that guy. I, I think I, I think he's probably going to have to go to Milwaukee, if anything. I know I know Chris Paul wants to go to L.A. Um, it's a lot of moving parts for the Lakers and Clippers. We'll see what happens. We'll see. But I'll kick it off on that. We'll see a little more news come in and I'll evaluate.